coast of Maine is host to many different types of pleasant experiences, both on land and in the water. However, the star attraction of the coast is one of the best national parks along the eastern seaboard. With a vast historical legacy, an expansive variety of wildlife, and plenty of opportunities for adventure, this is Acadia National Park. The park offers three main jumping off points for adventure, located at Mount Desert Island, Isla Haw, and the Shudik Peninsula. Shudik is located on the mainland, and the other two units are within the archipelago islands off the coast. Transportation between areas can be accomplished by boat or car, but visitors to Mount Desert Island will be able to travel in an old-fashioned way, carriages. John D. Rockefeller Jr., a national park enthusiast, paid for and helped to design the paths running through the many mountains and valleys of the park. Carriage rides are still available today through generous help from many groups, including the Friends of Acadia, who renovated the roads in the mid-1990s. While traveling the carriage roads, as well as the other park roads, be on the lookout for the park's many different forms of life, especially birds. Loons and terns patrol the waters of the Atlantic Ocean and other aquatic areas of the park. Peregrine falcons, as well as several species of owls, can be seen flying over the wooded forests and mountains. Many of these magnificent birds nest in the cliffs within the park, causing seasonal closures on trails like the Precipice Trail, a daunting hike to the top of Champlain Mountain, with hikers having to cling onto iron rungs as they navigate across the side of the landscape. Taking in the sights and sounds from nature can harken back to a time when the four tribes known as the Wabanaki lived on the land. To the Wabanaki, Mount Desert Island, or Pemet, being a range of mountains, was an excellent source of food and training materials, with fishing and basket making being some of the primary activities of the Wabanaki. Today, descendants of these fascinating people still live across the state of Maine and continue to visit the Acadian landscape. Other occupants of the area included the French, who Samuel Champlain gave scenic Champlain Mountain its name, and the English, who eventually lost the territory to the United States in the years following the Revolutionary War. The end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century saw many wealthy business owners construct estates called cottages, which were connected by Rockefeller's carriage roads. The National Park Service first established a presence in the area by establishing Chaudemont National Monument in 1916, then changing the name to Lafayette National Park in 1919, before finally settling on the title of Acadia, meaning Land of Plenty in French, in 1929. While Mount Desert Island is host to most of the park's activities, beyond the massive island lies the other two units of Acadia, the Shudik Peninsula and Isle of Hall. While small in anchorage, Shudik offers several hiking and biking trails, some of which culminate in an epic vista at Shudik Point, showcasing views of the many coastal islands, including Mount Desert Island, as well as secluded coves and boats fishing for a lobster, a well-known main delicacy. And among the lobster boats and numerous islands along the main shoreline sits Isle of Hall, another place who given a name by Samuel Champlain. Meaning High Island in French, the island is a combination of park ownership and private property and is the most secluded of the three park units, with visitors having to take a seasonal ferry to the island. A small campground at Duck Harbor and a few trails crisscrossing the island are located in Isle Hot, providing a blissful retreat into nature, a contrast from the often bustling Mount Desert Island. Acadia is a park where land and sea clash in a violent battle of tides and foam, and many ships have met their ends on the rocky shoals just below the surface of the waters surrounding the coastal island. That is why in 1858, the vast Harborhead Lighthouse was constructed to provide safe passage for ships traveling through the area. The lighthouse is a focal point for many pictures in Acadia, and its light, which became automated in 1974, extends 15 miles offshore. The lighthouse was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1988 and is under the jurisdiction of the Coast Guard. Acadia is a beautiful place, and its story wouldn't be complete without mentioning the man who helped bring about the creation of the National Park, George B. Dorr. Dorr, who fought to protect the Acadian landscape from the lumber industry and promoted the site as a national park worthy, also eventually became the park's first superintendent. During the Great Depression, Dorr requested a group of the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, be sent to Acadia. Known as the Tree Army, the CCC helped clear old trees as well as planting new ones and constructed buildings, some of which can still be seen in the park today. Dorr eventually got a mountain named after him, and the steps made by the CCC can still be seen across the mountain. Acadia first national park east of the Mississippi River has a legacy that spans generations and still continues to leave its mark on visitors today with stunning wildlife and traces of the people of the past that came before them. Acadia is just one of many national parks, your national parks, waiting to be explored by the next generation of history makers. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.